With the announcement of Kotlin, it's an exciting time to be an Android developer. Today on Coffee with a Googler, I'm chatting with one of the people who made it happen, Jeffrey Van Gogh. So one of my favorite moments at Google I.O. this year was when we did that Kotlin reveal and it was the Android lock screen and they carved out the K in it and the crowd went crazy. And Jeffrey, you're, I know you're one of the guys behind this. It's like, what was it like to bring Kotlin to Android? Oh, it was amazing. Um, like I joined Android Studio two years ago and of course we talked a lot to customers and we started hearing that people thought that Java was not really moving forward. They wanted to get more uh, modern language features. Uh, and so as we started looking into that, uh, one of the things that came up a lot is people really like Kotlin. And so about a year ago, I started playing with it. And like, it's so much more productive. It's so much fun. Uh, it's got a lot of the things that I really liked about C Sharp, um, but still a lot of the compatibility with existing Java libraries. And then they added a whole bunch of new things on top of it as well. And so um, it just makes programming a lot more fun. And so we're like, we need to get this into our customer hands. Okay. And so uh, over the weeks, months up to, leading up to I.O., we had a lot of talks with JetBrains and see if we could get it done. And, uh, we got it done, and people really are excited, and we are very excited. Uh, of course, it's just a start. Uh, we need to do a lot more hard technical work to really make it a first-class language for Android. And there's a lot more to come over the next year. Um, uh, I think we can do it. a lot of cool things. So why Kotlin? Uh, it's a fun language. Uh, it's like really fun to program. Uh, it's very little code you have to write. Like Compared to Java, you have to implement a whole class with set, uh, fields, getters, setters. Hash code equals. Most of my bugs are in Pojo's language. Oh yeah, so. uh, in, in Kotlin it's one line of code, and like there's many more examples like that. Uh, it's just a fun, productive language, and like makes your whole programming experience so much easier. And can I still be productive as an Android developer if I'm using like third-party libraries and open-source Java stuff? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Kotlin uh, interrupts with Java very simply. Uh, it, it, they both compile to Java bytecode, which we didn't. Conf compiled to Delphic bytecode for running on Android. And so it runs the same on the OS. And on the, the source language side, um, it has really good interop between Java and Kotlin. You can call Kotlin from Java, Java from Kotlin. You can even have inheritance where your Java class is extended by a Kotlin class and then extended by a Java class again. Nice. It works very smoothly. Nice. And then like from a tooling perspective in Android Studio, do I get like file new Kotlin? Oh, yeah. Uh, you can either in an existing project add a new Kotlin file, or when you start a new project, you just check the box in the wizard saying, I want Kotlin enabled. You'll already create the, the default activities in Kotlin source. And I'll set all the settings in your plugin, uh, Gradle plugin. It's a very smooth experience. Cool. You know, this actually really reminds me of when uh, Swift first came out. And there were a lot of Objective-C developers, and then Swift came out. But it had that level of compatibility that, as a Swift developer, I could consume Objective-C libraries and that kind of stuff. And then Swift really took off. So hopefully Kotlin will take off in Android in the same way. Yeah, that's helpful. Uh, I love the language, so I, I definitely like to see it uh, succeed. Now, uh, so if I'm an Android developer, mm -hmm. and I've been using Android Studio for a while. and if, if I've got like a number of third-party libraries in Java that I'm using, can I continue to use those if I'm Yeah, absolutely. Kotlin? So uh, the way that uh, Kotlin works, it compiles down to Java bytecode, which is the same thing that the Java compiler does. And then we uh, take our tools, the, the Dexter, that takes the, the Java bytecode and converts it to Delphic bytecode. Okay. And so for the Android OS, it's just the same. It's just Delphic bytecode. It doesn't know any different. And so um, like Kotlin actually has a really good uh, intro story with the Java code. And you can actually call... Kotlin code from Java and Java code from Kotlin, and you can have inheritance hierarchies in between, and it just works fine because, okay. again, it's all bytecode. Okay, cool. So now um, I've like I've only used Java and Android. It's on my to-do list to learn Kotlin. But mm -hmm. what, why all the love for Kotlin? Why why, why this language in particular? Uh, so I, I think if you look at the language, uh, it's not a particularly innovative language, right? Like uh, there's not a lot of new research going on. But they didn't set out to do that. They wanted it to be a productive language. So they looked at a lot of other languages that have a lot of modern features. And they figured, how can we interrupt this with Java without having to break the world and make uh, developers more productive? I think the area that they are more innovative is that they started from the tool side. Like most languages, they start, they write like a standard compiler, uh, batch compiler, which takes source input and run a command line and produce output. JetBrains is a, a tool company, and they started like, how do we do this in the IDE? How do we make sure that refactoring works? How do we ensure that static analysis works? Uh, I believe that they had the front end working before they had the back end working. Uh, so it's, it's a very different mindset. And I think the real innovation there is in the tooling. And that's why you see that people are so productive. The tooling works very closely with the language. And 
uh, makes you more productive than other languages. Now, now your role in Google is you work on the compiler. The compilation. Yes, so uh, I, I run uh, several teams in Android Studio, and one of them is the, the compiler team. Uh, so we, we used to have the Jack compiler, which converted Java source code to Delphi bytecode. And earlier this year, we announced that we are no longer investing in that. And so we started investing in a couple tools. Uh, we were doing Java 8 uh, desugaring for people who want to use Java 8 language features. So if you say Kotlin is not my thing, you can still use all the new Java 8 features uh, in Android Studio these days. Uh, we're also reinvesting in the Dexer. So the Dexer, I said, converts your Java bytecode to Delphic bytecode. And we're doing more and more optimizations there, making sure we produce smaller code. Uh, we're also doing work to make sure that it works very optimally with Kotlin. Um, so that we uh, can make sure that your debugging scenarios work correctly, et cetera. Um, and then the other thing I'm working on is I'm working together with JetBrains uh, on the, Cat the Kotlin language committee uh, to make sure that we evolve the language correctly. Uh, and so that mainly focuses around breaking changes and uh, deprecation policies. Uh, we want to make sure that Kotlin is a, a language that people can depend on for many years to come. And so there should not be any surprises that the features no longer work when you want to compile your app two years forward, right? Got it. So you're part of the, the language committee steering Kotlin? Uh, correctly. So we're not just investing in Kotlin, like being part of our tools, but we're really heavily invested in the language itself. Yeah. So uh, the, as we announced, uh, announced at Google I.O., uh, there is a foundation being formed. And as part of that, uh, there is a committee with people, one person from JetBrains, one person from Google, and an independent. And so we were looking at the language and making sure that we don't break people as we are building new cool features. Excellent. That sounds really cool. Now, um, the one thing I hear about Kotlin always is that it's fun. Yeah, okay. yeah it is. It's fun to play with. Like, what makes it so much fun? Uh, so for me, it's particularly fun. I, I have been doing programming languages for my whole career. Um, like I've been working on compilers like, and static analysis tools for 15 years. Wow. Uh, so I always like to see what cool things people do in language and what tricks you can do with it. Uh, but I think for even for people who are just writing programs for a living, not necessarily like programming language geeks, uh, it, it makes it a lot more fun because you don't have to write all the boilerplate code. I see. Uh, Java is very verbose. Um, like when you write like a, um, like let's say you have to, a, a, a class that's describing a customer, you have to write all the fields, then all the getter and setter methods, your get hash code, your equals. Um, in Kotlin, that's just one line of code and it will generate all the boilerplate and make sure that it's correct. Um, okay. And so there, that's just one example. There are so many things where they made sure that you have to write less code, that it's less buggy. Uh, like you don't have to worry as much about null pointer issues because they track all the null pointer information okay. and give you compiler errors if you mess it up. Okay. And like just going back to that moment at I/O when we announced it, it was like it was such a surprise, not just for like people outside of Google, but many of us inside of Google. And it's like. I sit really close to you here yes. in Kirkland, and I had no idea. I was sitting in the audience, and it just blew my mind that yeah. we're supporting Kotlin. We really wanted to keep it secret. Um, like we didn't want it to leak. Uh, like we want to have a big surprise. Um, and also, like we, we needed a time to make sure that everything mm -hmm. went through. We wanted to make sure we had a good deal set up, like to protect the, the future of the language. And so, um, like we wanted to make sure that we did everything right before we announced it. It was, I mean, it was, it was a, such a surprise, but such a great surprise because social media lit up, as you probably saw at I.O. And how, what's the feedback been like? Uh, a lot of people love it. Uh, like we, we heard a lot of people saying, well, I, had, I was worrying that I had to go argue with my manager. But now that Google <laughs> supports it, like it's, it's a done deal. It's always good when we prevent people arguing with their managers, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> As a manager yourself, I'm sure you appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, although a good technical argument, uh, I like to have those. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind. So, um, so the feedback was generally very positive. Yeah, I mean, I think there was some worry about people thinking that like, now we're no longer investing in Java. Uh, but as I said, we just added the Java 8 support uh, into Android Studio, and we'll keep investing there as well. We understand that it's not for everybody. Right. And so we fully plan to invest in, in Java functionality as well. So if I'm a new developer and I'm getting started and uh, I'm starting with Android and I'm, you know, I've heard all about Kotlin and how much fun it is, how would I get started like building this? Uh, so it's actually really easy to get started because it's not an either or choice. Um, you don't have to say, well, I'm going to either choose Java or Kotlin. Okay. Um, you can just take an existing Java project and add one Kotlin file and write one function in Kotlin and keep the rest of your app in Java and everything keeps working. Cool. Uh, or you could go as extreme as writing your whole app in Kotlin and never look again at Java. Okay. Uh, nice. So you can go anywhere in that spectrum. 
So like an Android Studio with my file new project experience, other Kotlin templates? Uh, yes, yeah, so either you can, if you have an existing project, you can just add a new Kotlin file. Or if you want to start with a SAM project from scratch, um, like in the wizard, there will be a new checkbox uh, in Android Studio 3.0 and above that says enable Kotlin. Okay. And it will do all the work of adding Kotlin to your Android plugin, uh, Android Gradle file to load the Kotlin plugin. Uh, it will also create the first activity in Kotlin source. Nice, nice. So then if I just want to get started with Kotlin, Android Studio seems to be the way to go. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then if you're not sure, if you want to try it, there's also uh, on kotlinlang.org, there is an online uh, Hello World uh, sandbox and you can play there as well. Oh, so there's a sandbox I can start typing code in my browser yep. and testing it out. Yep. And this is on the, the Android developer site? Uh, no, it's on kotlinlang.org. Oh, I see. Okay. And But the Android Studio I get from the Android developer site. Yeah. So. Yes. So if I want to get started, it's worth playing kotlinlang.org and uh, go to developer.android.com, download Android Studio. Cool. Yeah. And is there any like, words of advice you'd give to developers getting out and starting with this stuff? Uh, just try it out. It's so much fun. You'll, you'll, you'll realize that you don't have to write all your boilerplate code and coding becomes so much more fun. Sounds great. So thank you so much, Jeffrey. Thanks yeah, no a lot. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of Coffee with a Googler and for Jeffrey being our guest. If you like, are like me and you're just itchy to get started with Kotlin, we've heard that's the way to do it. The kotlinlang.org, Kotlin right? Yep. And also download Android Studio and you can just do file new experience and use the templates and just start coding. So I'm um, looking, really looking forward to seeing the kind of things that you're going to build. So thank you very much. And thanks again, Jeffrey. Thank you.